All right, so here's our throttle body. Here's our TPS sensor, four wires. It looks like it's in the middle of its little adjustable range. That's fine. Now, the cable pulls it that way. I'm actually noticing that this little throttle stop screw, it's rusted in there. I don't think anyone's messed with it. But there is a gap. This is not hitting the throttle stop screw. Very curious. Um, we're at 10.7. What if you try to close this manually and close that gap down? Will this... Oh, look at that. Zero, and I just let it go. Back down to 10. So if this throttle actually closed fully, this would drop to zero. That will definitely, should definitely bring our idle down. Let's, let's fire it up, see what happens if I just, oh. Bad starter. <laughs> that's, that's one of the ghosts. We're 12 volts there. I'm just gonna close the throttle here and force it. Boom. Okay, so this looks like someone adjusted something. You can see this roller used to go back further. I'm going to pop off this air tube, see what the heck is going on in here. Something seems abnormal. We stalled the car out. The IAC didn't react. Someone's been messing with this. All right, here's the situation. On Halloween, the ghosts are out. Has anyone ghost messed with this throttle body. Well, it's closing, and you can see that there is, you know, the plate can close a little more if it needs to. Now, it's not closing all the way to here. It's not tripping the idle position switch in here. And what I'm seeing is there's another throttle stop screw right there that's preventing this thing from fully closing. So it's a double linkage. The cable pulls on the lower pivot. Then this little roller rolls in this channel. And that closes, opens and closes the actual shaft. So that shaft is trying to close to this throttle stop. However, you can see that roller used to go back further and this screws all the way in and basically hitting this plate before it's supposed to. I think it used to hit in the middle. So someone definitely messed with this. Let's, um, let's clean out that garbage, the gunk. Adjust this so it's back where it used to be. So it hits the throttle stop. Our idle, should, idle stop screw should trigger. Put everything back together, see what happens. Okay, so throttle body is cleaned out. Now, I'm going to adjust this throttle stop screw, or the secondary throttle stop screw, to go back to spec. So, let's back it up, and I'm just going to go by the witness marks of where this thing used to be. Somewhere in the middle. <laughs> It's definitely bouncing against the, you know, the hard stop there now. Just, I'm just going to screw that down. So basically when you pull the throttle cable, at first there should be a little free play and then it'll start going. I, I, I like that. There should be a little, little free play there. So push, pull the throttle cable. Okay, now let's measure the TPS and that idle on off switch and see how the car runs. So air pipe is reinstalled. I even put a little piece of um, duct tape right here to seal a crack just from dry rot. Put a clamp on this hose to seal any air leaks. Um, this is all adjusted, so there's a little bit of free play before it opens the throttle and now it's hitting this screw up here which 
doesn't look like it was messed with. So on our voltmeter, we should see that that brown pin now should go to zero. We're still on, so we're on the TPS. Yes, we're in the brown pin. So key on, that is zero. If I push the gas just a hair, we're off idle. Okay, and now let me switch my lead to the TPS signal. We'll get a new minimum reading. The throttle did close a bit, so now it's 0 0.6, down from 0.7. So let's start it up, see if it fires up. Point four five. Okay. Okay, so the idle is a little low. Is our IAC working? That's the next check. So now look up some service info, see how to adjust this idle speed correctly. We're, we definitely took care of this crap. <laughs> so let's see. Reverse, that's good. And drive. Okay, second, four seconds still stalls the car out. That's probably not good. That's a transmission problem. I think it's a Ford transmission on a Mazda engine. Oh my gosh, see, this is the no crank situation. Let's see how to adjust this base idle speed. There is a little screw to adjust a minimum airflow. There's got to be a procedure. So, so that's better than when it came in. Uh, we're on the right track. All right, so here's the final adjustment procedure for this um, for the idle speed there is a bypass screw right there so basically warm up the engine and ground out that STI pin like we did to flash the check engine light codes and then set it to 6 to 700 rpm and should be good to go so let's warm up the car do this and then take it for a test drive there's this concerning knocking going on. Uh, wow. I don't know if I want to drive this thing too far with a knocking timing belt. Yep, you can see the tensioner. <laughs> that is cool. They cut out an inspection cover. if you can illuminate that. You see that right there? That tensioner is out of oil and it's going Oh yeah. Need the timing belt job before going too far with this thing. Alright, so the engine is Basically all the way warmed up. I'm going to turn off the accessories. We're going to connect our lead to ground. Engines, this is the base idle speed. You can see on our meter, 8.8 .8 volts. Now, it's barely running. See the RPMs are not even registering. Let's uh, open up this screw. I just want to count how many turns. 
Oh wow, it was all the way screwed in. One, two, or two turns. Let's see what the RPMs are. Gotta go more. Three. Oh, it's getting happier now. That's probably close. Maybe a little more. Three and a half. Yeah, I like that. About 700 RPM. And you can see our idle air control valve is almost all the way closed, 10.4 volts. Once we disconnect our lead, Yep, nice flare up. Right back down to about 750 to 700 RPM. Put in gear. Okay, it's happy. Now we can take it for a little t test drive. All right, so it seems to shift through its gears. Uh, the shift to second seems really harsh, and if you put it in in second, the engine does stall out. Right there, so if it forces in the second, it'll, it will stall out. Um, so put it in drive, seems to be okay. There's second. That's smooth, okay. Okay, so overdrive off definitely works, but the light doesn't light up in the cluster. And overdrive off, overdrive on, okay, good. Let's see, downshift it. Okay, kicks down pretty nice. sounds. The headlights are not adjusted very well. I mean smooth it goes. Not terrible. So there's something wrong with second gear. Just boom. <laughs> I don't see how this problem could have occurred on its own out of nowhere because that throttle was really misadjusted. The idle air screw was screwed all the way in, the throttle stop was in the wrong place, the TPS was, you know, not seeing the right things. This thing is definitely a, uh, okay, really, the torque converter is basically locked up in second, when you're in second gear. It's got, okay, it's got transmission issues for sure. So that's third, let's see. Let's 
see when I come to a stop, it's almost stalling out. There he goes. I think he shifted into first there. harsh. So if I force it into, if I come to a stop, it will not be happy. It's basically like you're driving a stick shift and you're just coming to a stop without pushing the clutch in. quite done with this car. I don't know how far the customer wants me to go with this money pit. So it doesn't start reliably, it doesn't shift very well. Timing belt needs to be replaced or at least a tensioner. Um, yeah. <laughs> Shift into first on its own. Okay, once it gets into first, it's fine. But man, in second, that torque converter is looks like it's locked up. Very interesting symptoms. So now the transmission problem is getting worse. Let's park. Oh, there we go. Once it gets into its fog, it doesn't even want to go in reverse. Oh, there we go. So it engages. So it's definitely not in first. He can't even shift to first. What if we go into... Okay, did it. Okay, now we're in first. Stall and drive. Yeah, we got problems here. So to get trouble codes out of this transmission in our you know, instrument cluster, the overdrive off light does not work, that kind of acts like a check engine light for the transmission. So we're going to do the same, same strategy here, hooking up a test light from battery positive to the overdrive off pin at the TCM. That's the TCM up there. So key on, if we press the button. That's indeed the right wire. And to trigger the codes, we have to ground out the TAT pin. So that pin right there. Right here. And it should flash if there are any electrical codes like solenoids or anything like that. So let's do key off, key on. Let's see if it flashes at all. Uh, no flashes. So no electrical problems recorded by the TCM. So basically, we're leaning towards transmission mechanical internal problem. So this is the 
uh, the Mazda Jatco uh, 4 oh, was it the 4 EAT 4 speed transmission uh, that was used with this V6 engine so the last thing we can do is check the fluid level and the color we'll look up uh, I think the car needs to be running to do that and if the fluid is fine this, the transmission control module is fine that's as far as I'm going to take this apparently these transmissions are not the most reliable and the owner is talking about swapping in a manual whatever that will be the end of this diagnosis so we got it to idle properly um, and the transmission <laughs> when it's cold you can drive it second gear is not happy but then it gets worse and worse and it's just you can't even pull up to a stop sign without stalling out it won't downshift to first it has a hard time going to reverse it's really messed up I'm checking the transmission fluid level uh, it's definitely high maybe too high it should be down here with the engine idling it's like all the way up here not down here um, so it looks very clean so I assume this car has been serviced now I don't know if it was serviced by a qualified technician I see some new hoses it looks like a transmission cooler zip tied to there Uh. Okay, so I figured the easiest way to drain some transmission fluid is just disconnect the hose at the cooler and then basically I don't know which way's in, which way's out, but we got both hoses in the pan. Let's just run the car for I don't know 10 15 seconds and just get a couple of quarts out of this pan and then refill it to the proper level. Shut it off. Not bad at all. That transmission fluid doesn't look f fresh, fresh, but let's see how the level is with the engine not running. Okay, now we're just about where we need to be. <laughs> right there by by the hot mark. Okay, perfect. Let me reconnect the cooler. We'll run it, see if anything changed. All right, let's let's see here. So it does not crank in park. Put a neutral fires right up. So park neutral safety switch maybe? Still not happy. It's still messed up. What I want to do is unplug 
the TCM completely and see what it does because right now <laughs> it's not happy whatsoever so I'm wondering if the TCM is responsible for this behavior or the transmission you know something internally because for a little while it drove pretty well except for second gear and then it got so bad like let's start it up and put it in you know put it in gear and it doesn't want to crank and park anymore I don't know the neutral is fine I'll let it warm up a little bit boom it's stalled out in reverse <laughs> and drive installs right out so let's unplug the TCM and see what it does with that module unplugged completely all right so the two TCM connectors are unplugged during a visual inspection I saw one interesting thing these two pins down here third one in and fifth one in look a little bit melted isn't that bizarre? Now I don't know if that's meltage or if someone was doing a little pokey pokey. Those pins get kind of hot and toasty. Now we'll see where they go. They're very interesting though. Huh. All right, so we put it in reverse. It actually engaged smoothly. Neutral, drive, and engaged smoothly. Interesting. How about that? <laughs> so now my question is, is it possible that the TCM is commanding like too much line pressure and just boom, you know, stalling this thing out? It's possible. I'm gonna take it for a spin with the TCM unplugged. Then we put a scope on at least the line pressure command and uh, there's a pulse generator, like a speed sensor for one of the, um, you know, right on the transmission. Scope that out. Because I'm, I'm not ready to call the transmission itself just yet. That would be a bad call. What if you say, hey, replace the transmission. They do that, and it turns out to be the module. You have to be 100%. Even though the module is not setting any codes, it's primitive. You have to do the checks manually. Sometimes unplug it and see how it drives. So right now it's in kind of limp mode. I think it's in, it's gotta be in third gear. It's just slipping the torque converter a lot. Let's see, can we force it in the second? interesting still inconclusive all right we're breaking out the big guns on the Ford probe transmission problem so I want to monitor with the scope uh, four channels the key things that could cause this symptom now if you put a car an automatic in gear and it just boom stalls the engine out usually that means the torque converter is stuck somehow so, when we unplug this TCM, transmission seems to be, you know, shifts smoothly, engages in drive and reverse, no issues. With the TCM plugged in, 
it's not happy. So I want to monitor the torque converter command. Is it for some reason turning on when it's not supposed to? Um, and then the line pressure command uh, for the solenoid. So on this wiring diagram, it's all on one connector. The channel one, let's see if I can illuminate that. Channel one is going to be the line pressure solenoid output. Channel two, torque converter on off output. Channel three, torque converter control output. And channel four, pulse signal generator. Uh, that's a speed sensor somewhere in the transmission, uh, one of the clutch drums. So four channels, let's just start up, take it for a spin, see how it reacts. If, you know, one of these drivers is just full fielded 12 volts, then that's going to be a problem. So let me set up the scope. All right, here we go. So it's key on, all signals are at zero. There's a start up. You see the pulse signal generator, okay. The blue went up and now it's pulsing to ground. I want to put it in reverse. Okay, it engaged in reverse. Engaged forward. Let me drop these time scales down. Shut the vehicle off. Okay. So let me save that, we'll review it, and I'll bump my, my uh, voltage scales down a bit so we can see all the signals on one screen. All right, here we go again. You can see line pressure goes up and then it's modulated at some duty cycle. Now we can actually put in a math channel to plot duty cycle You can see that's what it's doing right now, about 50%. Let's put it in second gear, see what happens. So it instantly stalled out. Just like it did before. Torque converter clutch didn't do anything funky. Let's uh, make a little longer time base here. We'll put it in first. And second, uh, <laughs> major stall. And we didn't see the torque converter being commanded on or anything funky, it just stalled out. So that to me says, hey, you got a transmission problem, man. This module is doing what it should. That's unfortunate. So just to wrap up the Halloween Ford probe, unfortunately a lot of parts will be required to restore this car to drivable factory specification. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know what to say. Uh, before buying a car, make sure to take it to your trusted mechanic for a pre-inspection. There are so many red flags on this vehicle, I don't believe it has 70,000 miles on it. I mean, just the wear on the brake pedal has more wear on the same exact brake pedal as my 89 Mazda MPV over there with 260,000 miles. Um, you know, and then they mess with the throttle maybe to compensate for this transmission issue. Who knows why is the warning lights don't work, the timing belt's flopping around, it's, it's a mess. <laughs> the interior's a mess too. Um, so customer's gonna pick it up, pay me for four and a half hours of diagnostics on it, so 
it's kind of a bummer. I don't know what he's going to do with it, um, but hopefully, keep in mind, you know, for the future that even though it looks, it might look reasonable on the outside, there could be a lot of things hiding under the hood um, that you know could cause problems. So thanks all for watching. Happy Halloween. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. What are we gonna do? Happy Halloween! <laughs> Happy Halloween, everyone! <laughs>